Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final chapter of Fatal Lies. I hope that you have enjoyed the story so far. Thank you for listening and for subscribing to my channel. I appreciate all of you so much. Well, here's to the end, shall we? I don't want nobody stabbing me with love. Don't want to waste no time getting my feelings hurt. I believe in those things we don't know much of. There's just so much to see that ain't about love I'm ready to face my fears I'm ready to taste the weird I just wanna walk the hills above My ordinary life, I could let it burn Cause I just wanna go, go, go to the deep end just... 20 minutes later, Serena stared at a land of an old burnt building there was a cross that had been burned to ashes lying in the corner of the broken building. Tears filled her eyes as she turned to look back at Sloane. She couldn't believe it. How could this happen? It was real, Sloane. I was here. She was here. And she comforted me. She drove me to your office in her car. I hugged her. I touched her. She was real. He let out a deep breath and walked to her where he laid a hand on her shoulder. I researched the place before we came out here. Sister Mary Ann was the director of St. Michael's Church of Heavenly Hope. She opened this church up when her younger sister was raped and left pregnant. She made this place to allow young girls to be safe. Someone broke in and killed her while she slept, and then they set the place on fire. Including Sister Mary Ann, 20 other women died in the fire. All were pregnant young girls. Serena sobbed and shook her head. I don't know what to say. She was real. Sloane turned her around to face him. She saved you, because you weren't meant to die yet. You still have a lot ahead of you. Be thankful she was there. Where is she buried? Do you know? Oakland Cemetery. The day was nice and warm as Selena slowly walked along the path of the cemetery where headstones with names, dates, and pictures stared up at her. She felt tears enter her eyes as she crossed the soft grass to stand before a tall headstone with Sister Mary Ann's name and date of birth and death. She laid the roses on the grass and let the tears come to her eyes as she reached over and rubbed her fingers across the name. Sister Mary Ann, thank you for saving my life. You came to me because I believe you were my angel. You watched over me, and I thank you so much. I'm only sorry that you had to die such a horrible death. You are truly what this world needs. I will always remember you. Serena wiped her eyes and turned around to find Gary standing a few feet away. She walked to him and as she neared, he opened his arms and she stepped into them, being comforted. Sloan had some work to do, so he sent me to watch over you, Gary explained. She smiled and pulled away. Thank you, Gary. Have you had dinner yet? No. Why don't we go get something to eat? As Sloane sat down, his phone started ringing, and he reached over and picked it up. Sloan here. Uh, is this Detective Sloan Ray? Yes, how might I help you? This is Jake. I'm the branch manager from Marquette Bank. You had called requesting that I review some things and get back to you about an investigation. Sloan sat up. Yes, thanks for calling back. What did you find? As far as the records indicated... No one called our office asking information on someone named Megan Fuller. Her account was closed three weeks ago on a Thursday. She claimed to us that she was moving away. She sighed deeply, knowing he had been right all along. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure, no problem. Sloan hung up and walked to the front desk. Where's Gary? He said you asked him to keep Serena company, and he went to her place, I think. A chill ran down Sloane's back as he swore and grabbed his jacket and ran out the door. He turned and shouted for the man to call back up. Serena handed Gary a drink as she settled down on the couch across from him. They were sitting in her motel room with the TV turned on and the volume turned down low. She shifted her gaze to him and smiled at him. Thank you for making sure I was okay. No problem, Serena. By the way, are you back at work yet? No, I'm not. I called Thomas and told him I needed a break. I don't know, perhaps after this I'm going to go on a vacation. 
you know, a real one in Hawaii where I can actually get a tan. I haven't gone on a vacation in years. How about you? Nodding, he set his drink down on the table. I agree with you. I think the last time I went on vacation, I was eight years old with my parents. You know, that whole thing where you're embarrassed to be with them? Yeah, that was me. Laughing, Serena replied. You're funny. But I do know what you're talking about. Before my parents died, they were so fond of vacationing. They used to take us on these long ones in the summer. Her words stopped short as her sister came into her mind. Gary noticed her sudden change of mood. I'm sorry, this must not be a subject you care to talk about. Your sister's death is still raw. I'm trying to forget it, but I can't. Everything that happened is just, it's just so awful. He moved forward and took a seat beside her, and he reached out and touched her cheek. Look, I know how this just eats at you. I've been through these times before. The thing is, if you think about it, it just makes your life harder to go on. You gotta find some way to forget about it. The more you concentrate on these things, the faster you'll go insane. Serena nodded and wiped her eyes. I can't stop thinking about it. The way she looked and spoke to me when she came back into my life, she wasn't even my sister. She was like some stranger who wanted to kill me. And to think that I lived my whole life and I didn't even know who she was. I don't know. I thought that we weren't going to be okay, but everything just seemed so different. Our whole lives just, it just blew up in smoke. Gary touched her hair. I'm sure your parents' boating accident was also hard to get over. Serena paused for a split second. She turned to look at him and saw his eyes dilating. A chill ran down her back as his soft smell spread across his lips. Yes, it was very hard to get over. She stood up and turned around to look at him. Gary, I, I think I'm okay now. You can go back to your station. He stood up and shook his head. Orders from Sloan was to stay here with you until he showed up. Well, I'm fine. You can go now, Gary, really. He started walking toward her. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. She began to breathe heavily as she looked for an escape. She started walking back as he came toward her, and then suddenly his hands were around her neck. She screamed as he pushed her body against the wall. The wound from her back made her echo a groan, and he slapped her hard across the face. Her cheek went numb as he laughed at her. I didn't think you could figure it out, Gary whispered. She swallowed down the fear as she stared at him. I never told you my parents died in a boating accident. He laughed. Oops, my mistake. He tossed her across the room where her body landed on top of the coffee table and the air knocked out of her. Serena felt blood pour from her mouth as she struggled to stand up. She looked up in time to find Gary drawing a knife from his back pocket. And when she tried to run, he grabbed her hair and tossed her back onto the couch, where he pointed the knife at her throat. Why are you doing this to me? Serena sobbed. He laughed and bent down and licked her cheek as she whimpered. Why? Why am I doing this? He pushed her away and pointed the knife right at her eyes. Because your sister killed my girl. What? Serena asked in shock. Yeah. Joanna Lindsay, the dope head they used to replace your sister at the crime scene? She was my girlfriend. She was expecting my baby, and they just used her like some piece of garbage. They killed her while my baby lay inside of her. And now you're going to pay for that. But I wasn't the one who killed her. Please, Gary, they're already dead. But you're not, Serena. I can't let you live. It was too bad that they couldn't kill you. You see, I was the one who broke into your workplace and took you. Ricardo was paying Megan for all the work she was doing on the street. Darren was making sure she did what she had to do. And I, I was the one who held the group together. When they took her and killed her, I knew that they could kill me too. So I blackmailed them to pay me. But they disappeared on me. What they forgot was that I was a cop. I found them and I made a deal with them. If I could give them you, we would be even. My plan was to kill all four of you together. 
it would ease my pain. I just never thought you'd get out of there alive. Too bad Sloan can't be here to see your face. The door bust open and Sloan walked in. He had his gun drawn and pointed at Gary. Drop the fucking knife, Gary. Gary laughed. Oh, a threesome. Come on in and jump in. The water's warm. Sloan shut the door and walked in. Gary, don't do this. We can get you help. Fuck the help. This is much better. I can spill her blood for my dead kid, and this way I can leave you in misery for once. Gary, Sloan yelled. Buddy, we don't have to do this. Just put the knife down. He laughed and grabbed Serena by the hair as she screamed and he pointed the knife right at her throat. How did you figure out it was me? Easy. You never called the bank for Megan's documents. When I traced your work, I found out you were lying. You never could cover up your path well. Be careful, partner. I'll slice this bitch up and you'll never want her again. Please, Serena cried. Shut up, Gary yelled. Gary, drop the fucking knife. Don't make me shoot you. Gary laughed. You can't shoot me. I'm your partner. Sloan lowered his gun. You're right. I can't shoot you. So why don't you let the girl go and we can settle this man to man, huh? You and me. No weapons. Gary thought for a second and then pushed Serena down with her head slammed into the corner of the table and she fell over unconscious. Gary looked up and laughed. Oh, my bad. I must have pushed her a little too hard, he yelled as he lunged forward with his knife. Sloan ducked and threw a blow toward Gary's face, connecting with his nose. He heard the cartilage break, and the blood gushed out of Gary's nose as he swung his knife toward Sloan's face, and it slashed across his cheek. Gary laughed as he came forward again, and Sloan kicked his legs out from beneath him, and Gary went down flat. The knife flew from his hand and landed beside Serena's hand. Growling, Gary elbowed Sloan in the chin where it sent him flying to the ground. And Gary grabbed the lamp on the corner and tossed it at Sloan, who ducked. Sloan finally got up and threw a punch that caught Gary in the throat. Serena woke to the sound of the two men fighting. She felt dizzy as she slowly pushed herself up. She saw the knife flying. She curled her fingers around it as she looked up at him. Gary had Sloan in a headlock. Both men were bleeding profoundly, and Sloan knocked Gary off into the ground as she stood, right as she stood up, and tossed the knife towards Sloan. Gary grabbed Sloan's gun and fired a shot at her. No! Sloan cried. Serena felt the pain in her chest. As blood began spreading through her shirt, she gasped and fell to the ground. Her breathing slowed, and she felt the world go black. Gary dropped the gun as he noticed the knife was sticking out from his belly. He turned and found Sloan staring at him with deadly eyes. And he walked to Gary and pulled the knife out, and with one swift turn, he slashed Gary across the throat. Gasping, his eyes rolled back, and he dropped to the ground in a thud. Sloan dropped the knife and ran to pick up Serena's body. She was breathing faintly as tears filled his eyes. He held her in his arms as she stared up at him. Sloan, she whispered faintly. Serena? You hold on, baby girl. You need to hold on, okay? You got me? I need you in my life, he cried. She managed to smile as she reached up slowly to touch his face. Sloan, I love you. He started crying as he grabbed her trembling hand and held it. No, 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 no. You, you don't get to say that to me. I don't need your goddamn goodbyes. You hear me? I need you. She smiled weakly and then her head snapped back and the cry from Sloane's lips echoed across the empty room as he held her closer and cried into her body. And when he pulled away and stared at her open eyes, he grabbed a handful of her hair and pulled her tenderly toward him, crying and sobbing. Epilogue Sloane stared at Serena's headstone and let out a deep breath as he laid a dozen white flowers by her grave and reached over to touch the headstone. He removed his sunglasses and felt the tears drip down his cheeks. Two weeks ago, he buried her. Two weeks ago, since the bloody massacre ended, he placed his trembling hand inside his pocket. He took one look at her grave, turned, and walked toward his car. While driving to Serena's workplace, the radio started playing a pop song as rain began pouring down. He turned on the windshield wipers and thought about the past few weeks. 
He had put in his papers. He couldn't do this job without thinking of her every waking moment. He was going to take a break, maybe go back to school, get something else to do. He had been at home for the past three weeks, staring at walls in space. He had gotten extremely good at it. He turned the car into Serena's workplace and entered the building where Gladys looked up as he came in. He removed his sunglasses and placed them inside his pocket. He smiled weakly as he walked to her desk. Hi, Gladys. Can you let me into her office? I'm here to pick up her personal things, Sloan said. With a sad face, Gladys stood up and opened Serena's office door. Here you go, detective. We all miss her so much. Thank you. She turned and walked away as Sloan returned his gaze to her office and walked to the desk where she sat. He hadn't been able to come here for fear of breaking down. The office looked exactly the same as the last time that he was here. He walked to the calendar on her desk and saw her handwriting on the night she was taken. Dinner with Sloan, and he felt like crying as he ran his fingers over her handwriting. He walked to sit down in her chair and pulled out the drawers. A soft, pink, fluffy book caught his attention, and he pulled it out and noticed that she had only written one entry. Dear Diary, Today, Sloan and I made love for the first time. It was perfect. She is so kind and so tender, not unlike any man I've ever known before. I think in my heart, I've fallen in love with him. There is no one quite like him, and I've never been taken so surprisingly by love before. And this, this is what true love is all about. To my Sloan, I hope you know that I am madly in love with you. I will be thinking of you wherever I am or go. You are always with me, and no matter what happens, you and I will always be together, because I, Serena Fuller, am forever yours. Thank you for tuning in to Fatal Lies. I hope that you enjoyed the story. I will see you in the next episode. I don't want nobody stabbing me with love. Don't want to waste no time getting my feelings hurt. I believe in those things we don't know much of. There's just so much to see that ain't about love I'm ready to face my fears I'm ready to taste the weird I just wanna walk the hills above My ordinary life, I could let it burn Cause I just wanna go